We are covering section 3.6. Um, this is going to be over trigonometric functions, so we'll say trig functions. And so first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to define the derivatives of all the trig functions. So we'll say ddx of sine, derivative of sine is equal to cosine. And if we want the derivative of cosine, that will equal negative sine. Let's don't care about that. That will equal negative sine. So for the rest of these, they kind of are related. If you look at the derivatives, um, we have a ddx of tangent of x is secant squared x. And then if you look at the derivative of cotangent, that will equal negative cosecant squared of x. Oops. So if you kind of know the left hand columns here, you put negatives in front of them, and they're kind of related to the right-hand derivatives over there. A uh, couple other last two that we got, ddx of uh, secant of x is secant tangent. And ddx of cosecant of x is negative cosecant cotangent. So these right here are six uh, trig derivatives. And then we got three examples that we're going to go through and just uh, cover real quick, talk about using these. And then we'll wrap it up there. So, uh, first example. Uh, they give us f prime of x, or sorry, f of x is, co is uh, x cosine of x. And they want us to find f double prime. So, what we'll do. We'll go through and we'll find f prime of x first. That's going to require the product rule. Since we have kind of two things that are multiplied together, I'm going to leave the first one alone, and then I'll take the derivative of the second one. Then I add to that. The one I left alone initially, I now take the derivative of it. So I take the derivative of x, and I leave the cosine of x alone. So I'm going to just rewrite this, make it slightly nicer. Okay, so that's our second derivative. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, or sorry, that's our first derivative. Just kidding about that. So now we're going to say, well, if that's the first derivative, what's the second derivative? So again, I have kind of two things that are multiplied together that's going to require the product rule. So I'm going to leave the negative x alone. The derivative of sine is cosine plus, now I take the derivative of negative x, and the derivative of negative x is negative 1, and this time I leave the sine alone. And then plus out here I take the derivative of cosine of x, since that's cosine of x by itself and it's separated from a plus, we don't need the product rule for it. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. So my second derivative, uh, second derivative will equal negative x cosine of x. Negative sine of x plus another negative sine of x is minus two sine of x's. And that's our second derivative, and that's basically all we have to do for that one. So again, we just used a derivative of sinus cosine 
and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So moving on to next example. We want to verify that the uh, d dx of tangent equals secant squared. And we're going to just, uh, we're going to use d dx of sine of x is cosine of x and d dx of cosine of x is negative sine of x. Okay, so we want the derivative of tangent, we want to show the derivative of tangent is somehow secant squared. So we'll start out with tangent. And we'll remember from uh, pre-cal, uh, tangent's really sine of x over cosine of x. And so I'm taking the derivative of a division, which we can say we can do that using the quotient rule, which we'll write up here just to kind of remind us. It's bottom left alone times the derivative of the top minus top left alone times the derivative of the bottom, all that over the bottom squared. So let's go through and do this. Bottom left alone is cosine. The derivative of the top. We want the derivative of the top, which is sine. Derivative of sine is cosine, so that's times another cosine minus the top left alone, so the top is sine, times the derivative of the bottom. The bottom is cosine, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. All that over the bottom squared. The bottom is cosine, so this will all be over cosine, uh, cosine of x squared, which we could say is that. Okay, so let's simplify stuff down. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Uh, the way to write cosine squared, you can write it that way, or you can put the 2 here. So we're going to say like cosine squared of x like that. Negative sine times another negative sine is positive. Sine times sine is sine squared of x. And then that's all over a cosine squared of x. And this right here is a trig identity. Um, if you remember, cosine squared, I guess all you guys probably saw it was sine squared. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. That's one of the Pythagorean identities. So we're going to use that, and we're going to say, well, then this all turns into 1 over cosine squared of x. You want to remember again from... Uh, from pre-cal, uh, secant of x is 1 over cosine. So if we have 1 over cosine squared, 1 over cosine squared should equal secant squared of x. And at this point, we verified what we wanted. We started with taking the derivative of tangent and we worked our way down to show that we got secant squared. So we started derivative of tangent, we used the quad, uh, quotient law, quotient rule here to break that up. Then we use Pythagorean identity, and then we just use what is secant really in terms of cosine, and we got what we wanted. So everything is working out good there, I guess. Uh, the last one wants us to uh, find, the slope, find the tangent line to the graph. So find tangent line to the graph y equals tangent of theta secant of theta 
at theta equals pi over 4. Okay, so first thing we want to remember our equation of a tangent line, which would be y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a. And in this particular problem, a is going to be pi over 4. So we know that pi over 4 is plugging in there. So we need to figure out what is this function here, this y function evaluated at pi over 4. So to do that, we'll do that kind of a scrap work over here. We'll say what is tangent of pi over 4 uh, times secant of pi over 4. Okay, so if you think about the unit circle, Kind of draw a little first quadrant of the unit circle. Pi over 4 is here at the kind of the, it's a 45 degree angle. That's pi over 4. And it corresponds to points square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. And if you remember on the unit circle, this one here corresponds to cosine. And this right here corresponds to sine. So tangent is sine over cosine. So sine of pi over 4 squared to 2 over 2, that's divided by cosine of pi over 4, which is the same thing. So square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is just 1. Now secant is 1 over cosine, so it's 1 over secant of pi over 4 is uh, going to be cosine of pi over 4 down below, which is a square root of 2 over 2. So then what we got to do is simplify this. So multiplying by 1 doesn't really do anything. I'm going to do keep change flip for this uh, second complicated division. So we'll get view 1 is kind of 1 over 1. Change it to a multiplication and flip the bottom part to 2 over square root of 2. And we get 2 over square root of 2 for our, for our answer to that, which means f of a where a is pi over 4 is 2 over square root of 2. Okay, so we got that part. The final part is we need to know what is the derivative of this thing and then plug pi over 4 in for that. So we're going to have to use a product rule because we have two things multiplied together. We have tangent times a secant. So if we use the product rule, Derivative of tangent, or let's leave tangent alone first. So we'll say, all right, tangent is left alone. And then we'll take the derivative of secant. Secant's derivative is secant tangent. So we'll say this is going to be tangent times a secant times a tangent. So we left the tangent alone. We took the derivative of secant. Now I need to add this, where this time I take the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared, and I leave the secant part alone. So first one left tangent alone, took derivative of secant. Second one, take derivative of tangent, leave secant alone. And now we kind of simplify that up. So we're going to say this is secant theta tangent squared theta plus secant squared times another secant is secant cubed theta. So I need to evaluate this at pi over 4. Which will be we'll get there in a second. Write it out what we're doing. Okay, should probably scoot this down a little bit so it's clear, a little bit clearer as to what's going on there. So we're finding the first derivative evaluated at pi over 4, and that first derivative evaluated at pi over 4 is equal to this. Secant of pi over 4, we just saw secant of pi over 4 turned into this, which turned into 2, square to, 2 over square root of 2. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so that will be 1 squared. 
plus secant of power over 4 is 2 over square root of 2, but it's cubed. So we'll get 2 over square root of 2 cubed. And if we look at this, this will equal 2 over square root of 2 plus 2 over square root of 2 cubed. So I'm going to say, okay, that is what's going to go in here. Okay, so to finish up, we're going to rewrite our formula here, um, plugging everything in that we found. So we will get y minus 2 over square root of 2. So we'll say, all right, that's y minus 2 over square root of 2 equals, it's going to be for the f of a, or f prime of a, it's going to be 2 over square root of 2 plus 2 over square root of 2 cubed. So I'll say 2 over square root of 2 plus 2 over square root of 2 whole piece cubed times x minus pi over 4. And this whole thing will be our answer. Alrighty, so that'll do it for the book problems.